What's up you guys on the internet? Apuj here and this is why I love YouTube channel and here we are with eight or all right what is it? With day 18 I think and 18 okay with day 18 of hacker rank in Python. So today's video is about day of the programmer. Sorry for the noise in the street but I can't do anything about it and actually I'm already too far like I haven't uploaded for a while so had to do it despite the noise sorry for that okay so here's what we uh, here we are so just before i start uh, i'd like to th thank you for your feedback okay i've got some comments uh as a feedback on the videos so i'll try to implement them in this video and let's see how it goes so leave your feedback again in the comment section okay so let's go for it all right so marie invented a time machine and wants to test it by time traveling to the future all right or time travel okay not to the future to visit russia in the day of the programmer which is the 256th day of the year all right during a year in the inclusive range from 1700 to 2700 from 1700 until 1917 russia's official calendar was the julian calendar all right so since 1919 they they switched okay so they switched to the judicial or the Georgian calendar system. The transition from the Julian to Georgian calendar system occurred in 1918. When the next day after January 31st was February 14th, this means that in 1918, February 14th was the 32nd day of the year in Russia. What does that all of the, what does all of that means is let's jump in and get that year exactly. So first we have the year 1919 okay so i'll bring it over here 1919 and let's see all right so in 1919 which is a normal okay just okay be before we start all right all right let's let's fall back okay back up okay so link story short let's just check the function description i will tell you what we are going to do so and the, complete that day of programmer function in the editor below. It should return a string representing the date of the 256th day of the year, giving the year as a parameter. All right, so first we have two types of year, like normally. We have a leap year, all right, and we have a normal year. And this will make the date different, okay? Because here it expects us to give the date, as you can see here. So. For example, it would give us 2017. We will return 13th of September 2017 because it's a normal year. If it's a leap year, it will be the 256th day of the year will be the 12th of September instead. Okay, that's cool. Now, that's the first difference. The second difference is that we have the Julian calendar, which was used before the year 1918. Now, it has the same effect, okay, but we uh, identify a leap year differently. We'll get into that. So just for now, we have leap year, we have normal year, and we have the 1918, which is the year that the, uh, the, year that the switch happened in. So let me bring a few diagrams over here. As you can see here, we have three possible outputs. Any normal year after or before 1918, its result will be 13th of September. Any leap year, like it's for 13th of September of that year, any leap year after 1918 or before 1918, so any leap year in general, would be a 12th of September. For 1918 only, okay, which is the year that the switch occurred in, it would be 26th of September. Why is that? Okay, let's first see, is 1918 a normal or a leap year? Well, 1918 is a normal year, indeed. Let's check it out over here in the, uh, what is it? Here it is. So we have here 1918. So if I just give it a quick refresh, just so the URL. Okay, so. Uh, Okay, so the page list uh, with day and week number, the year has 365 days. That means it's a normal year because a leap year has 366. If we scroll down so quick to the day 265, you will see 
that uh okay it's the 13th of september okay that's cool so the 256th day of the year 1918 is 13th of september now here's the catch that they switched okay as you can see here uh, as the, the the okay the transition occurred in 1918 when the next day after january 31st was february 14th this means that in 1918 february 14th was the 32nd day so february 14th okay which is over here was actually not the 45th day of the year but the 32nd day so here we have a 13 all right 13 days different or the th a 13 days difference that we will need to add up to close the gap to the 256th day that's why in 1918 only the result should be 13th okay because it's a normal year plus the 13 days difference so it would be 26th of september hope that makes sense all right so with that cleared out if we took a few test cases okay so uh as a rule of thumb like uh, leap years are all all leap years okay are divided by four okay so either in the julian calendar or in the georgian calendar so if we took for example uh 1800 it's a leap year so okay we will go with the leap year so the uh we should return 12th of september 1700 okay or 177 uh is a normal year so we should return for 13th of september for 1918 we said we should return 26th of september and for 2006 2016 because it's a leap year we should return 12th of september for 19, 2019 we should return 13th of september because it is a normal year now uh leap year okay so before we get into leap year so we here is what we're gonna do we want to check if year equals 1918 we will, will return this special date which only applies to 1918 because that's the year that occurred the year that the change occurred in if year is leap we return 12th of september if year is not leap we return 13th of september now how do we identify the year if it's a leap or not leap we have two type of years okay we have the Gregorian calendar and we have the julian calendar uh so if you check over here before okay which is less than before 1918 to, ident to identify a year as a leap it just has to be divisible by four okay if it's divisible by four then it's a leap year now if it is after 1918 we need to check for three things first that it's divisible by four and divisible by 400 and not divisible by 100 so for example the year 2000 Okay, it's divisible by 4 and it's divisible by 400, but it's also divisible by 100. Okay, and since it's divisible by 100, it's not considered a leap year. Let's now jump into the coding that we, now that we've explained everything, let's jump into the coding. So if we scrolled, all right, so first thing, first thing we want to do over here which is as you can see the logic we first want to check if year equals 1918 okay if it is then we would return the date as 26th of the uh, 9th or september 1918 now else if year okay else if is leap okay we'll create this method or function shall i say if it's leap then we would return what we did here if it's leap we'll return 12th of september so it would be 12th of september of the given year and we will format this to and pass the year so it would uh, this this would act as a placeholder for the year to be uh, included over here so whatever the year it would be formatted to be in the string else 
that means it's a normal year and we will return 13th of September of a given year <clears throat> will pass there so all clear now we can go up here and define give a space define is leap function and it would take a year and we will not write anything for now uh, let's try the code we have already so let's run the code <clears throat> it would of course give us some errors but we make we want to make sure so for the normal years like 2017 it should work anything that is a leap year uh, it should give us uh, so as you can see our output is 13th and it expected uh, 12th yeah we like uh, we'll fix this in a moment so now we need to apply the logic of identifying a year as a leap or not so basically creating the or implementing the is leap uh, function so we'll get back to the uh, diagrams over here so we have is leap first we want to check okay let's go with this so first we want to check if year is after 1918 so let's say if year is after 1918 then we want to check if year okay if year divisible by four equals equals zero and year divisible by 100 doesn't equal zero so what does this mean is it's divisible by four and not divisible by 100 okay and or shall i say or year divisible by 400 equals equals zero so basically we write the equal equal zero just to make sure that it is divisible and the remaining is zero so since the remaining is zero that means it's divisible okay if that's the case we will return just true okay we return true over here and so if this returns true over here when we call the function this function would return true so this will be this code will be executed now this logic for any year after 1918 for any year okay else or sorry else f else f give an indent if year before 1918 oh my god why did it messed up okay if year after before 1918 we just want to check if year divisible by four equals equals zero. That means there is no remaining. And if that's the case, we will also return true. That means it is a leap year. Else, else that means it's not a leap year. And we just return false. So this piece of code does not get executed. And instead, it goes to execute this code. I will add some comments just let's make sure it's working let's run the code okay it passed the three first three let's submit the code and it worked nice okay so let's get back and give it uh, the code a uh, review okay so first here we check okay check if the year is 1918 if it is okay if it is if so then return this special case or this special date okay which only applies to this year because of the transition that happened in this year now then a check if it's okay this code no like this if leap year if year okay will execute that is leap with the year given and if the method if or if the function returns true then it will return 12th of September of 
a given year. Else, that means it's not the special year, which is 1918, and it's not the year, and it's not the leap year, so it's a normal year. And else, that means it it is a normal year. And just return 13th of September of the given year. Now, I hope that all is clear. Now, then we move that to the is leap, okay, year. Uh, so, if year is after 1918, okay, this bigger means like after. If it's after 1918, it wants to check first, okay, like it has to, those conditions, two conditions, those two conditions must match, okay, that the year is divisible by four and not divisible by 100, like those two must match. You can have a look at the logic over here of the leap year in the Gregorian calendar. So as you can see, we start over here, we check, is it evenly divisible by four? If yes, we go, is it evenly divisible by 100? If no, we go to the leap year. We also check, is it evenly divisible by 400? If yes, we go to the leap year. And we check all those three in this one liner. So we check if year is divisible by four, not divisible, okay, this means it doesn't equal zero. And if it doesn't equal zero, that means it's not divisible. Or, okay, <clears throat> since this will return here, leap year, we don't, we won't just check or, okay, so if it's, or if it's just divisible by 400, then it's probably a, four, uh, a leap year and we don't want to check anything else. Then it would return true for the if statement to be executed. Else if, okay, if year is not after 1918, if it's before, we just want to check one thing, okay, and this is the algorithm for checking a leap year for, for the Julian calendar, which is the calendar that was used before 1918. We want just to check if four is divisible by, or if the year is divisible by four. If so, then it's a leap year because it's before 1918 and we just return true. Else, that means it's not a leap year because it didn't match the leap year after 1918, didn't match the year of nine, of the leap year before 1918, so we just return false. And this would cause this if statement to just execute the normal year date. Hope that makes sense for you guys. Oh my God, that was a long one. I will not edit this video and will upload it as it is because apparently when I edit the video, I remove some important stuff. Okay, hope you've enjoyed it. Make sure to hit that like button, give me your feedback in the comment section and check the link in the description because I'm working on a 100 Python trick to master the snake course or a package. Uh, it would be very, very useful for you guys for solving those challenges, for improving your skill in Python in general. So check the the link. It would be like you would subscribe to a waiting list because the course is not yet ready yet. I'm still working on it. But just so you, you make sure you will be one of the first people that hears or knows about it. All right. So yeah, with that being said, hope you, with that being said, peace out and see you in the next one. Thank you.